But pro-Palestinian protests on college campuses nationwide showing no signs of slowing down, despite repeated efforts to shut them down. At UCLA, fights broke out between Palestinian supporters and pro-Israeli activists when a barrier meant to keep them apart was breached. Demonstrators on at least 22 campuses have been arrested so far. We have team coverage of the demonstrations. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen is at Columbia University. But we are going to begin with CBS News Los Angeles reporter Tina Patel. She is outside of UCLA this morning. Tina, what's happening right now there? Well, there is security been increased here on this campus because of the problems that we saw here yesterday. There is still that pro-Palestinian encampment just down from where we are. In fact, it has grown since it was first set up on Thursday. There's now a few dozen tents that are here. And UCLA, for the most part, is allowing them to camp out here. It's a group of both students and outsiders. They say this is a public university. They believe in freedom of speech. So they're allowing the camp to be here as long as it doesn't interfere with any university uh, uh, activities as long as students are able to get around. But as we said, yesterday there were barriers that were set up there because there was another group that had gotten a permit to have a demonstration for pro-Israeli supporters. They were trying to keep those two groups separate, and when those barriers came down, we saw a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. Now, UCLA police tell us they did not make any arrests, but it did get heated, and that's why they have now increased the security, keeping an eye on things. Again, the pro-Palestinian supporters, they say they are going to stay here. They're going to continue to have their demonstration as long as they're able to. We don't know if there are other groups, pro-Israeli groups, that are going to plan other demonstrations, but that is what campus security is really trying to, to juggle, that, that balance between freedom of expression but also keeping everyone safe. Indeed. Uh, Tina, thank you very much. All right, to the other side of the country now. Tom Hansen's outside of uh, Columbia University, where it basically all began, these uh, encampments. Um, what's the situation like there? Hey, Anne-Marie. Well, as you just mentioned, this was and still is the epicenter of this movement that we're seeing on so many college campuses. But what we're seeing today is a far cry from what we saw in the last few days. The police barricades that used to be here are now gone. There is not a tense situation similar to what we were seeing last week, but we do have one major development, and that is a statement from the university president that we just received minutes ago saying that there is no agreement that has been reached. As you may remember, the students were calling for the university to divest from certain companies where the money, they say, goes to fund Israel's war in Gaza. Uh, the university president, this is the first statement that she has made as a singular uh, entity, usually it's joint statements, uh, where she says, we urge those in the encampment to voluntarily disperse. Of course, this is ahead of May 15th, that major date when students will graduate. In the statement, she went on to say that many of these students were robbed of their graduation in 2020 because of the pandemic. They want to ensure that they have a proper graduation this time around. Um, and also, I should note that the statement goes on to say after the commencement, after the commencement, students will have to apply to protest on campus, which will be a two day process. Statement also says while the university will not divest from Israel, the university offered to develop an expedited timeline for review of new proposals from the students. So, of course, this is the first major development that we've seen in a number of days. And once we can get onto campus uh, later this afternoon, we will certainly be asking students themselves what they think about this statement. Anne-Marie. All right, uh, Tom, looking forward to hearing from you later on. Thank you so much.